So this is a really important slide, and I need for you to understand this, so um, excuse my teaching, but if you give me your eyes and your ears here, this is important. The current preschool programs have two sources of funding. One is Title I, and one is special education. Both of those funding streams are federal dollars. Both of those funding streams have very strict um, eligibility requirements. In other words, you can't just use the dollars to serve the preschoolers um, any ones that you want. Title I, you must serve based on their need from that dial. And early childhood special ed, the child must have been identified um, under the special education um, eligibility. We do not receive, this is the important one, we do not receive funding for four-year-olds for preschool, that pre-kindergarten grade, like we do every other grade level, K through 12. The way we get reimbursed from the state for those grade levels is by average daily attendance the number of kids and the number of hours they sit in a seat in our programs gets put through the formula and those dollars then come back to us. There are no dollars through average daily attendance for preschool for four-year-olds, which is a really um, important thing for you to know. If we were to add additional preschool seats, there is no new funding stream anywhere for us um, to access. So we would have to take Title I dollars, which are federal dollars that are funding preschool seats right now, which are also being used to um, have a program for struggling readers. So many of you know reading teachers. The Title I dollars right now are being used to hire those folks because the gap exists and we have kids in grades K, 1, and 2 that, have, um, that are struggling with reading. So if we rob Peter to pay Paul, and take those dollars to add more preschool seats, we have less dollars to buy um, reading teachers. Okay, just to get you a perspective, to replicate our current model, and we're not saying that's um, the model that we're married to, but just to give you a perspective, we would need $75,000 um, per classroom. That would buy a teacher, a para, the materials, the supplies, the snacks, and all of those things. So every year it would cost approximately $75,000 for every preschool room that we would add. In order to provide a seat for every four-year-old in the community, we would need approximately 32 classrooms. Okay, so I know that you wanted to um, that the group decided that they would like to know how do we compare to some other districts. So let me just quickly, I know it's hard to see, so maybe you can look on your chart at your table. These are um, comparable districts as far as demographics and the kinds of populations and uh, families that we serve. So the first column is the district. The second column says center base. That means if you have a preschool in that district, did they bring them to a center, um, a, a, another building, another location called the Early Childhood Center? If the answer was yes, that's what they did. If it wasn't yes, it means they housed them inside their um, elementary schools. The next section, the next one, two, three, four, five columns are all about the funding. How did they fund their programs? Um, Title is the federal program that I just told you about. Almost everyone utilizes that. Parkway probably doesn't because they have such a low free and reduced lunch rate. They probably don't get very much title dollars, very many title dollars. Um, ECSE is the special education dollars I told you about. MPP is the Missouri Preschool Project. We have had those, their grants. We've had them in the past, but they're for startup programs, and we haven't had a new program for many years. Uh, tuition means parents pay to come to the preschool. Head Start, a couple of districts have Head Start programs within their buildings. Um, the next column is really important. I want you to take a hard look at it. This is the percent of children served. So of all of their four-year-olds, what percentage are they serving? You can see that we're at 33%, which is um, the third lowest on this list. But the one column I want you to look at and juxtapose that free and reduced lunch count to is the last column on the right. The last column on the right is their free and reduced lunch count. Free and reduced lunch, 
um, for anybody that doesn't know, is really based on the poverty census count. So in our district, we have 59% free and reduced lunch rate, the most of anyone on that list. But we are one of the districts that serves the least amount of four-year-olds. You would look at Lee Summit, who is serving 22, only 22% of their four-year-olds, but their free and reduced lunch counts only 14%. Probably lots of moms and dads paying for private preschool in Lee Summit. Um, we can look at the highest, which would be Parkway, which is serving 71% of their children, and their re free and reduced lunch rate is only 17%. Um, you can go the other way. Independence is very much like us. Their free and reduced lunch, lunch rate is almost exactly what ours is, and they are serving 50% of their students. So that gives you some kind of a, an idea about where we stand with comparable districts. What would you expect if you had everyone sitting in a preschool seat? Well, you'd expect higher achievement, fewer special ed referrals, less remediation, increased attendance, fewer discipline incidents, higher graduation rate. Those all turn into equal less money, higher achievement. So the question before you tonight is, knowing what we know, what should the St. Joe School District's commitment be to early childhood education? Thank you for your time. Can you give that to Dan? Do that. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Watkins. Thank you, Mrs. Patterson. Very, inf very informative. Uh, at this time, I'd like to just take a quick second to thank the Central Administrative uh, Administration, the staff, and the ROTC students for hosting us tonight. We give them a big round of applause. Thank you. Okay, now it's time to go to work. Uh, look at the activity sheet in your packet. There's also a copy of a color sheet of paper, this orange paper at the center of the table. And this is the official sheet for your recorder. Okay, now I'm going to go through the instructions. Each group should select a recorder and a spokesperson. The recorder is responsible for completing the information requested on the worksheet, that orange sheet, and be sure to complete the information in the box in the upper right corner. That's the part that says table number, recorder, sale, uh, spokesperson. These worksheets will be collected at the conclusion of the meeting. The spokesperson should facilitate discussions, keep the group focused on tasks so the work is completed in the allotted time, and report the group's information if time permits. We're asking that staff members at the tables allow parents and community members to volunteer for the recorder and spokesperson roles. Please make sure the information uh, recorded on the group's worksheet reflects a collective decision or consensus of everyone at the table, not just the opinion of one or two individuals. Uh, monitor your time and progress to make sure you complete in the allotted time. And I will help. I'm going to give a few cues as we're going through the process to kind of so you know where we're at on time. So I'll try to help with that without interrupting too much. At the end of the session, we will only collect the worksheet that is completed by the recorder. Okay, task one. Uh, come to consensus regarding the three most compelling reasons for improving the St. Joseph School District Early Childhood Education Program. Okay. Task two, uh, several items are listed that would significantly improve the St. Joseph School District Early Childhood Education Program. For each item, come to consensus regarding the degree of importance or impact the item would have on improving the early childhood education program. On the number five being the most important, maximum impact, and one being the least or minimum. Okay, now task three. By consensus, circle the item in task two 